This is a worksheet on nonlinear programming, and we're just going to go through an example problem where we solve uh, a nonlinear objective function subject to two nonlinear constraints. One is an inequality, and one is an equality constraint. So we have a standard form where we have an objective function, and then we also have an inequality constraint, and then an equality constraint. And so what we're going to do is solve um, this problem. Now this is actually a part of the um, huck Shitkowski um, test suite uh, for optimization problems. And so we're going to minimize um, this objective function. So it's, we have four variables, x1 through x4. And we're going to give them these initial guesses. So 1, 5, 5, and 1. And then we're going to say that um, all of those variables have to be greater than or equal to 1, and then also less than or equal to 5. Okay, so between 1 and 5, and then we're going to try to minimize an objective function that is a function of all five, or all four of those variables. And then we have um, our first constraint, which is that the product of all of those variables has to be greater than 25. And then the sum of the squares of those has to also equal 40. Okay, so this is going to be our inequality uh, constraint, and then this is our equality constraint, and finally our objective. Okay, so optimization, nonlinear programming problems often have combinations of these, sometimes um, many hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of inequality or equality constraints, and typically a single or multiple objective functions. Okay, but we're going to come here, and we're just going to, first of all, for this problem, we're going to um, also you know, just plot a potential feasible solution for this. Okay, so um, I'm going to come down here to a contour map, and let me just explain this first of all. This is the sum of the squares, so i equals 1 to 4, and we're squaring these up, um, and adding them together, and that equals 40. Okay, and then we also have here, we have that the product um, 1 to 4 xi, okay, is going to be less than, or actually that was greater than um, 25. Okay, so we have our two constraints, and then we also show our objective contours here. Okay, now in this case, I have four variables but I'm just fixing x1 and x3 at the optimal values and just showing this contour map as I change x2 and x4. Okay, so let's say I've already determined the values of x1 and x3. Um, okay, so this is what the contour map looks like. So I know that my solution has to be greater than 25. Okay, so it has to be on this side of the boundary in order for the product constraint to be met. And then the other thing that I know is that my constraint also has to be on this red line here, okay? The 40 has to actually lie somewhere on that, on that red line, okay? Because it equals 40. Okay, so I wanna try to determine um, the feasible space. Okay, so the feasible space is actually gonna be just right here along this line of equal to 40. Um, but I can't go beyond this point or uh, this point in the upper. Um, and so I, that's my, my feasible search, my feasible space is somewhere right along this line. Okay, so for that contour map, that is the potential, those are the potential feasible solutions. Okay, so we've already identified the constraints on the contour plot for number two. Um, we identified that this was the sum of the squares and this one was the uh, product, okay? And then um, we marked the feasible solutions, and let's take a look at the minimum feasible solution. Okay, so let's find the minimum value. We can see that as we proceed this direction, that our objective function gets less. Okay, so if I come along this line, then right here, the bottom right, Okay, that's where I have my minimum solution. Okay, and then let's also do the maximum feasible solution. And I'm gonna come back up, okay? Let me see where I get to. 
um, to get a maximum solution. So it looks like it's about right uh, here for the maximum solution. Okay, so I went, if I continued further, then my, I would get closer to this 30 contour and my objective would go down. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve this as well with nonlinear programming solvers. Um, we just did this graphically with just two variables, but you know, nonlinear programming solvers are set up to be able to solve you know, very large scale systems and very complex systems. Okay, so I'm going to come over to um, apmonitor.com and if you type in this address or um, you, you can just see uh, this this problem um, again this is the um problem number 71 okay so I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here and um, I can select a couple different solvers to choose from for example IPOPT, um, APOPT um, and uh, you know optimize is what we want to select here we don't want to select any of the dynamic modes I'm actually going to um, select try all. So I'm actually going to try all of the available solvers and see which one uh, works the best. Okay, so let's see um, what we had here. Okay, so the first solver um, was successful and it took just a fraction of a second. You can see the objective of, of 17. Okay, so um, let's compare that with the BPOP solver now. Uh, the BPOP solver took a few more iterations but again, the same objective solution. And then let's also see the IPOP solver. If I come down to the bottom, again, the same objective function, it was able to solve that. Okay, let me come back up to the top and I'll just select the APOP solver and solve it again. And then that will show me the value of my solution. Okay, so I had, um, so this is going to be uh, my optimal uh, values for x1 through x4 and then I also had um, an optimal objective function if I click on view solution results I can also see this with the constraints and the different variables for this problem